In the news this week, say goodbye to AAA. WA's credit rating downgraded as the state battles record debt. Ride for me, please. WA cyclists raising funds to help muscular dystrophy patients. And an amazing facelift for one of Canada's favourite spray parks. This is the Evening News with Ivan Lung and Daniel Staniskov. Good evening. First this week, let the sale begin. The state government has finally announced its first round of asset sales after WA loses its AAA credit rating from another agency, Moody's. Kira Taplin summarises what is up for grabs with the strings attached. After Moody's downgraded WA's AAA credit rating, this is the response from the government. Uh, there will be components of utilities and uh, the uh, infrastructure of various government departments that will be sold. Uh, they will not have a direct or significant impact on the West Australian public. Premier Colin Barnett and WA Treasurer Mike Nahan have announced the first round of asset sales by the state government in their bid to regain WA's AAA credit rating and reduce the $22 billion debt. That is higher than we would like and it is our objective to uh, contain state debt uh, at around 20 or low 20s in terms of billions of dollars. The Port Hedland Utah Point bulk handling, Cronana bulk terminal and the Perth Market Authority will be the first on the list. This is not a fire sale. These are looking at the assets that we uh, want to sell, uh, do the due diligence properly uh, and go forward. It is likely these asset sales will have a lease of 50 years and will garner one to two billion dollars to help pay off the debt with Mr Barnett saying that asset sales could gain up to $6 billion in the next three years. But the opposition said this is a short-term solution to a long-term problem. This is not an issue around GST, it's not an issue around revenue, it's an issue around expenditure. And ultimately, all this is, is for Mr Barnett to find a revenue source to continue his spending. This will not reduce the level of debt. Kira Tuplin, WAM News. In other news, WA is getting ready to raise funds for muscular dystrophy patients with the annual Dwelling Up 100 campaign. Organisers are aiming to raise more than $100,000 to improve patients' quality of life. Ali Harper has a story. On September 6, over 1,000 dedicated bike riders will participate in the major fundraising and awareness initiative Ride for Someone Who Can't. 53 of them will ride the 100km track in Dwelling Up on behalf of the Muscular Dystrophy Association of WA. And what we do is we put the message out that we would like people to ride for someone who can't, so we marry an individual up with someone with muscular dystrophy, and we've had responses from mostly amateurs, but also the professionals. Western Australians living with muscular dystrophy face daily challenges. Their muscles waste away, stealing their independence. They are confined to electric wheelchairs because they can no longer walk, and each day it becomes more and more difficult to breathe. Money raised will assist the organisation in continuing to provide programs and medical devices for the muscular dystrophy community and fund research into the illness. Being able to wake up and go, you know, I can clear my lungs, I'm not going to have to go into hospital, I'm not going to have to go into emergency departments, you know, I'm not going to pick up all the sorts of things that, you know, can, can happen in hospitals and I can go on with my life and, you know, it really does make such a significant difference. With the fundraising total currently sitting at $70,000, Mr Gummer is confident the association will reach their target of $110,000. Ali Harper, WAMN News. A forum was held in Perth to discuss the political issues in Ireland. Sinn Féin's deputy leader and MPs has attended the event. Issues surrounding 457 visa holders were also on the agenda. The issue of Ireland unification has arrived in Perth, all the way from Belfast. I'm here with my colleague and we're, we're visiting a number of Australian cities over the next week or so and to talk to people about the peace process in Ireland, the prospects for Irish reunification. A gathering was held at the Perth Irish Club with the Deputy Leader Sinn Féin Mary Lou Macdonald and MP Francie Malloy attended the event. The event is part of an international campaign to push for reunification in Ireland. Organisers are demanding a border poll to decide whether Northern Ireland should be reunited with the Irish Republic. Well basically we're trying to highlight and raise the issue of Irish unity and trying to 
raise that awareness with the Irish diaspora, but also with the political leaders in other countries to try and get their support for a united Ireland. During the gathering, folk music and tales were performed to mark the Irish Revolution in 1916 and the hunger strike in 1981. The issue towards the WA government's education charge regarding school fees for children of 457 visa holders was also mentioned. Well, it's totally unfair for actually to ask people. It's basically double taxation because people are already paying for the services uh, and they're entitled to have a proper education system for their children. The Sinn Féin politicians will visit other cities in Australia this week to gain support for the Irish unity motion. Darren McElane, WAMN News. The opposition spoke out against the government's track record on public transport. The latest figures show that ridership on Perth's train network has dropped by 2 million, while train fares have risen significantly. Labor's transport spokesman Ken Travis said the government dropped the ball on the issue. The fares have been increasing significantly faster than the inflation rate under the Barnett government. People make a choice and they've clearly chosen to drive their cars rather than use public transport. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. A mountain's worth of scam mails sent to WA Homes were intercepted this week during a joint operation by Australia Post and Consumer Protection. More than 346,000 scam letters have been seized so far this year, with scams featuring dodgy health products, lotteries, price draws and fortune telling. Commerce Minister Michael Mischin said residents should avoid being conned by throwing away suspected scam mails. To world news. In Canada, renovation has been completed and Calgary's famous water theme park, Prairie Winds, becomes the first spray park in North America to base its theme on flowers. Canadian correspondent Dustin Lowe reports. Three, two, one, push, push it! Buttons. <laughs> Kids celebrated the reopening of a spray park in the hot summer joyfully. It is the spray park at Prairie Winds Garden in Calgary, Canada. Sustainability is a global word for city planning nowadays. The major standard of this seemingly ordinary spray park is its use of high technologies including UV disinfection capabilities, and cleaning of water, and a concern of kids, the power of the sprays. The spray pad is actually 10 times bigger than what we used to have here and yet it's using the same amount of water due to the better water technology. It's exceeding all of our provincial standards. It is also the first spray park in North America to use grassland as the theme. It can serve up to 2,000 people at peak at once. Dustin Lowe, WAM News. And those are the top stories of the week. Carly Samata will be back next week with the latest in science. We hope you enjoyed our program. You can read the latest news on our website. Good night. Thank you.